Mike would probably cook me up some nasty. Oh. Thanks for joining us for the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting on Tuesday, October 29th, 2024. The time is 6.02, and I'd like you to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So even though we just started our meeting, we're going to take a five-minute break because our new ambulance is outside and all of us want to see it. So we'll be right back. Recording stopped. Let's go take a look at this bad ladder. Is it supposed to drop again tonight? Yeah, it should be like It's going to rain tonight. Is it really? Finally. Yeah. So it's like 6 in the morning. Oh, okay. Oh, I better cut my live splitter then. Oh, we're still oh, we're, we're live? Yeah. All right. Splitter. Are we still on, according to you, Robin? Uh, no, I signed out. I was in memory. Are we online right now? We are on Zoom right now. We are not online. Right? I know, if we just didn't shut the light off. Ted? Are we ready to go back on? Recording in progress. <laughs> Thank you for uh, indulging us in that. It was a long time coming, and Chief, the ambulance looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, before I get into this next, actually, any, any citizens input? Anybody here for citizens input? Nobody? We're good? Um, oh. I, I'm looking at it. There's no one on except for me, so we're good. Um, I'd like to thank everybody in the town and all the, the our employees, everybody that came out for the um, swearing in of the new police chief, uh, Deflumery. Thank you. The ceremony went really well, I think. It was really well received. I've received a lot of comments about, about it. There's been a lot of good pictures online and stuff. So if you didn't get to see it, you can go on Facebook. Or is it is it on the town page too, those two links? It's on YouTube as well. And it's on YouTube, that's right. Maybe we can put those two links temporarily on the town page so yeah, people can see the pictures and stuff. Um, but again, thank you to everybody that came out for it. It really was exceptional. And thank you to everybody that helped put it together in such a short period of time. That being said, next up, I would like to ask the town clerk to come up and make some <coughs> announcements. and they're running and, and registering to vote. We have a lot of, lot of new voters. This is gonna be a very busy election. Every single one of you need to be there. Every single one of you need to be there the entire time. If you're going to appoint, um, you know, the designee, <laughs> sorry, um, you need to do that beforehand. Not that day, not the day before. Please have it done by Friday if you're gonna appoint somebody. You cannot take my workers. <laughs> They're my workers. Ooh. So find your own workers. <laughs> Excuse me? Do they do that anymore? They're working for me. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're in a pinch and you need them, sure. Um, but I'd rather you all stay. This is an extremely important election. I don't want anything going wrong. We're going to have a lot of people watching us. This is not going to be a fun night. It's going to be a long night. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll make it fun. So I also want to make sure that everybody is aware there's an election. And I mean the people that set up should know when they hear the word election, the Monday morning before, they show up at the fire station to set up. 
and I'm hoping everybody that sets up, sets up. I can't be involved. I don't have anybody to relieve me. Tony is not here. So I can't be there for setup. Um, traffic flow, not up to me. I don't care what you guys do, figure it out. I'm more concerned with inside the building than outside the building. But something, you gotta kind of figure that out because you, they took away our little loop-de-loop -loop around the building. So improved. gotta figure something, <laughs> something. Um, between the two chiefs and Mike, I'm sure something will work out. I think that's all for election stuff. With that being said, before you go on, mm -hmm. um, Mr. O'Mara, on Monday, I briefly talked to the fire chief and the um, moderator. I think Monday morning, when we do our setup for the election, we should ensure that Mike Pavero is there, fire chief, and the police chief, so we can figure out traffic patterns for the next day, so we're not doing it the morning of. Can you just make sure that they're all there for that? Um, yeah, I think the traffic patterns have always been all done by the police. Now, safety is kept for sure, but the CDC is. They're ready to run. We're well prepared. Okay, it's fine. It's just the moderator's show, so I want to make sure he knows. Sure. Yeah, I, t I told him that we would um, be in touch with the police department to make sure that they were all set, ready to control okay. the traffic. Monday, Monday they, what do you guys usually show up at nine, I guess? Yeah, I think about nine o'clock. And I know, nine Dan, I talked to you last time at the primary, that set up, because I'm not gonna be there, you know, that little, I know you know what I wanna do, yeah. all right? And, and um, Mr. Desmelli thinks that's a great idea, so. I'll try to do it in my head, but yeah, I that get you. Work. All right. It would be awesome if we could get that flow. I will okay. do my best. That's basically elections that I can think of right now because my brain shut off. My other thing is president stickers. Starting in January, when as people renew their registrations, they will be given their new stickers. I'm in a bit of a dilemma. While I was on a temporary leave a few years ago, apparently this policy was changed and I didn't know about it. Um, the policy says two stickers per household. Uh, limited two stickers per household. Stickers may be purchased for $5 for any individual, any additional vehicles over the limit. I don't know if that's contradictory, but so two stickers, fine. I am not gonna know, most people do them online. They do their registrations online. I am not gonna know which two cars, what two cars. So they're gonna have to come in and get their stickers. If I'm still short-handed by then, I'm going to need some kind of help. And I know if Jamie's in the building, she can help, but it's, I need a consistent help. I spoke with other towns that do s stickers they leave it to the transfer station employees to do this. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, I just am trying to think of a better way to do this. As it is, they come in, we write the sticker, the plate number on the sticker, we write it on the back of their registration, we write it on the back of my copy of their registration, it gets written down on a sheet, and when we have time, we put it in a database. Very time consuming and it's, it's just, it's not doable at this time. So uh, you guys got great brains. <laughs> if you can think of an easier way to do this, this would be great. But just know that at some point, starting in January, I'm gonna need somebody to help me with these stickers. There's no way possible I can do them all um, by myself. It, okay. it, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. <laughs> All right, we'll try to come up with a plan for you. Just, just some, something, something easier than what we do. But they'll need access to know if they're registered and everything too, the person that does the stickers. Well, they have to have their registration. Right. You come in with your registration. This is my, I want a sticker for this car. And again, it's two per household. So then it's gonna be like tracking that so is gonna be nearly impossible. Does the policy need to be changed? I don't know. 
It used to be six per household. Two. That was it. Now it's two. How many registered cars can you one, have in each house? One per registered car. How many registered cars in the for, town? For one resident. For one resident? As many as you want. But Joe, you, Joe, you can't go buy that I because... I people that own six or seven vehicles. Why? I oh. don't know. <laughs> they just do. I didn't know if there was a policy in the town. Uh, no, yeah, but, no, but Joe, because... You can, you can own as many vehicles as you want. You can only have one unregistered on your property. Joe, you have families that are living that have adult children. You that know. are still living at home too, so up. that there, there's your case of the multiple vehicles. So, here, I mean, I, I want to discuss this at another. Meeting. I'm just giving you kind of and a little I, heads that's up. That's perfect. I don't yeah, want to yeah. discuss. No, we don't tonight. have to do that. So, just so you know, this is, is just my little I'll, things I'll that are coming sure up. I'll make sure it's on a yeah. future agenda, and I'll make sure you have enough lead time so you're here for the discussion. Yeah. Perfect. So you can offer your input. Perfect. And we can move forward that way. Perfect. I don't want to do it right now. Thank you. Thank you. And. That's all. <laughs> That's Thanks, all. MJ. Thank you. Thank Going you. back to work now. See you later. So this is just uh, as a question, or not a question, but, oh, Trisha McCarthy. Um, we have many hats. Um, EMD. Um, oftentimes I'm there for setup for election and takedown. I ju I'm just asking, and maybe you've already done this, transfer station usually helps with both set up and take down and at the primary in September there was an issue with each of them were told different times so some came at one time some came at another time so if you could just make sure that they're told whatever time you want them there so that they don't show up when we're done sure Okay, uh, next in uh, Country Pond Lake Association. Is Greg here? Greg is not here. I have not heard from Greg. I did receive documents. So I'm assuming Greg is maybe in traffic. I can email him. I can put it. I am, but I can't present it here. No, 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 we're not, it doesn't even need That's done. Yeah, he already did his presentation. Is that why you're here tonight, is for? That? Yeah, we can. Oh, is Greg still coming? Because I'll table it. If he's in route, I'll just table it and we can. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't, um, Was he supposed to come? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Let's table it. I think Greg's still on the email. Just in case he's going to come, I don't want to table it for the whole meeting. Oh, okay. I just want to move it down the line, and if he shows up, we'll do it then. If he doesn't show up, we'll do it at the end of the meeting. Is that is that fair? I don't want you to sit here all night, Pat, if no, you don't, don't have to. Don't if he's on his way, we'll wait. If he's not going to come, we'll do it. Um, okay. With that being said, uh, fire department chief monthly review. Good evening, board. Good evening. Morning, Chief. Yeah, good evening, Chief. <laughs> it's almost my morning. Uh, I'm just going to be brief so I don't hold up the board. Uh, for September, there was 47 calls. Uh, there was a question brought up by, I believe, Joe in regards, uh, by one of the board members about transports. Uh, the department's done 27 transports, 16 BLS, and 11 ALS. Uh, some notes on September 4th, the department, uh, we were dispatched six times within seven hours, one for a commercial fire alarm, five medicals. One of those medicals, Newton transported at the paramedic level. On the 16th, the department hosted a forcible entry class, uh, this time for Merrimack Fire with the new uh, forcible entry door prop we have. On the 19th, 
Tank 4 responded to Amesbury, Mass. for mutual aid. On the 19th, A1 also did another transport to Exeter Hospital, and the department continues to do its trainings with our mutual aid partners. Two quick things. Uh, on December 7th, the ninth annual Fire Department Toys for Tots will be held at the fire station. I will be dropping off the boxes sometime this week to Town Hall Library Police Station. And also, uh, this week is First Responders Appreciation Week. The Fire Department, along with the Police Department, will host a breakfast for both departments jointly for the first time Friday morning. Maybe. Nice. Very nice. Chief, what is BLS and ALS? Basic life support, a Band-Aid. ALS is advanced life support. Could be a stroke, cardiac arrest, difficulty breathing. Okay, so you've done 27 for this year. For this year. And one for this in September. Is we've actually done that? we've actually done two ALS transports for September alone. Okay. Okay. Yep. And. I think Jim Danville. Yeah, uh, I, I, oh. I the right there well. Okay. No. No, no, no. I, 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 it's, it's important enough to know. Um, as everyone knows, and maybe the community doesn't, but they're rolling home. Uh, we have a, an agreement uh, with Trinity to have ambulance service for our residents along with four other communities for a total of five. just based on monetary commitments, not runs, not population, not anything that you would think would be a necessary driver to uh, participatory costs. Um, and there's a chance that one community may know. Are you all set? You got yeah, I got an ambulance out of service, so I'm good. <laughs> oh. in, in the event that um, one town decides that they no longer want to do this, um, the gross amount stays, but it's divided amongst four communities, so our number would go up commensurately with that. Um, in a non-public session, uh, we'll be discussing more details associated with this, but it's important that uh, you know and the community knows that there's a chance that there'll be a community backing out. And we budgeted specifically for that original money and our portion of that money so we would end up, I would end up having to find more money to contribute should they successfully back out. We're confident it's going to be challenged by Trinity, um, but I don't know what form they're going to choose. Uh, so right now it's a stinging letter from Trinity's attorney to Danville, um, basically saying you can't do what you're doing. Um, and we're going to want to talk about it further in, in non-public session about the intri intricate details of the le legal aspects of what could transpire. Well, with that being said, Mr. Maher, we've also talked about that um, Trinity has also stated that they're already um, starting their withdrawal process from the commitment because they know that um, they will next year we are not going to follow up again on the agreement that they're looking for because they were going to increase the monies and that's why we purchased the new ambulance that's sitting outside and my question to the chief is that and we had talked about this and I know the rest of the board is on board that January 1st we want to be functioning yeah. full strength with well, our well not January 1st not January our contract is until March. Yeah, but as it is, and we're not getting any Don't response with them. We're going to get sued if we do that. We have to wait till the end of the contract. He'll be ready, and the chief will be ready, but we can't do it. Would, if I may, uh, just two, three real quick points. One, uh, Trinity has said they will honor the contract basically as long as everybody plays in the sandbox. They're going to honor the contract till March 1st. Second, the fire station is ready to go. Third, if the board so chooses, the department's ready to flip the switch on January 2nd to 
there's nothing saying that we have to do take every single transport. We can run it the way we've been running it since we've been in the old fire station. If they're unavailable, we take it. At least that way we get all the bugs with scheduling and everything out so it's a smooth transition. And that's what I'm talking about. Well, exactly. No, it's not. It's not because Trinity is still the first call. Right. There, right. Even January 1, Trinity is still the, January 2nd, Trinity is still the first Correct. call. So I, you can't, but you can't say January 1st, we're going, we're ready to go and all this other stuff when in reality it's March. Because until Trinity is out of the picture, it's not solely on us. That's all I'm saying. The, the fire department's game plan in, is what Bob and I, we, we've talked about in the past is that we're going to the January 2nd date. I know it's always been said January 1st, nobody's going to work New Year's. So <laughs> let's be realistic. Uh, January 2nd, we run it the same way we're running it now for 8 to 12 and 14 hours shifts. We're doing it now, and if Trinity's unavailable, we take the transport. Right. Do you know what I mean? The, there is no intent from my, the board side or the fire, from anybody's side, to violate the current contract. Exactly. Well, the point, there's no difference, we're doing it now. Well, the, the thing is that we'll have, the people will stop performing their shifts so that the response times will be a lot better as far as the town goes. So instead of the people being on call and coming in, they will be staying at the firehouse like we have intended so that we have a better service for the residents of this town. And then like the chief said, this way here, they work out all the bugs with the new ambulance to be able to make sure that that's all done and addressed with in case something's gotta get taken care of, they can be addressed so that we are ready to go when March comes around. So in the 2025 operating budget, you need to include the three months that it's already it, it, it should be already should be already included i just okay. need it from the just board a, a, i just don't want you doing uh, eight months okay uh, 11, nine months excuse me yes um because january february and yep. uh, january february and uh, no not ten january, february 10 months january and february right. we're not anticipated full ball right right but you well, had a plan to shadow the existing program until the end of February and a March one go date. But no, the, the difference is on this side, the thought was starting January 1st, running 24 hour shifts, instead of just covering the fire station during the day, running the 24 hour shifts starting January 2nd. That way, by the time we hit March 1st, the the eight day rotation scheduling, everybody's in place, so it's a smooth transition. The only difference that would happen on March 1st is we would do 100% of the transports. Right, but Jim's just saying payroll purposes for that two months, that that needs to be included in the budget okay. to make sure that there's no shortfall there. Okay. That's all he's addressing. Okay, so like I said, everybody just has to get onto the same page, yep. and yep. it sounds like we all are. Yep. Not to me. But I'm still getting used to the way things uh, are getting done. The, the goal is to run a, I said shadow, I meant a parallel program. Uh, but staffing 24 7, starting the second, um, I guess w wasn't part of our presentation during deliberative session last year, nor was it part of our presentations around town regarding um, that particular warrant article where we set up the revolving fund for the board to access funds to do that. Money still exists. We've only had a modest drawdown and it's gonna be reimbursed by grant money. Um, I think it would be important, Chief, if uh, we could see a paper staffing schedule and I don't, we don't need names. I don't need names. Just we need FF1, FF2, FF3, all the way up to FF14 and show how they're gonna do. I, I can honestly tell you standing here right now, it has been talked about for a long time since before the deliberative session that we were gonna staff the beginning of January. I will stand here in front of you and tell everybody 
that we wait till March 1st. No, 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 I'm not suggesting that. I, no, I, I what I'm saying is if we wait till March 1st to do 24 hour coverage, I'll stand here and say, you might want to sit down and talk to Trinity because we're losing individuals. Okay. But, but you, I, you understand what I'm saying? No, I listen. The, I understand the fire department had the, and I, I, I won't say the fire department, the chief and the EMS coordinator had the thought, because it was said that January 1st, Newton was going to have 24 hour staffing. If that is not going to happen, then the board would have to make that decision, or somebody's going to have to make that decision, and I got to go be the bearer of bad news to a bunch of individuals. And I know I've talked about it in the past. So we're talking in the about, mid, in the we're meetings. talking about a strategy for retention? Yes. Correct. Yes. Retention and potential that, recruitment. The, correct. We are and getting seasoned firefighter paramedics to come in to work. Uh, they're being hired as per diems. It was based on flipping the switch at the beginning of January. I will be coming in front of the board of selectmen probably in two weeks with two more. If we're going to hold off till March, then there's no need to be bringing per diems in because we have plenty of staff to work eight to four, Monday through Friday. Okay. You good? No, that, that, that's good for this topic right now. Okay. I was looking at saving us a month's worth of payroll. That, that, that's all. And that being the month of January. However, you make a very valid point. If people are jumping ship going to neighboring communities because of 24 hour shifts available and close to $40 an hour being paid, which yeah. is not sustainable in the town of Newton whatsoever, uh, it makes sense. Uh, I think the community would be excited to know that 24-7 uh, fire and, and ambulance are, are gonna be in place. Ambulance is more of a shadow Correct. Only in a necessity, based on a field evaluation by a trained medical professional, Correct. will we pick up and run. Correct. Other than that, we'll abide by the contract. Correct. Which town of Newton abide by has been abiding by that contract since I guess that before my time, since that contract's been in. That's why if, when you go into non-public, you'll notice the difference. Newton twenty-seven transports in a year compared to another department. That is, we won't mention the transports from January 1st. There's a big difference. How many? Do you know? Th that, don't quote me, I want to say 80 to 84 transports. Okay, thank you. And that's from Janu uh, January to October. Alrighty. Okay. All right, what else you got, Chief? That's it. If you intend. If anybody wants to come Friday, just shoot me an email so we can have a head count. You got two requisitions here, too. Oh. <laughs> I forgot it. Do you need these? Oh, you forgot? No. All right, we're moving One. on. <laughs> <laughs> Requisition 1092 for $7,310 $10 is to start replacing uh, outdated firefighter gear. We're asking the board to approve for three sets of personal protective equipment for $7,310, and that is on state bid. Chief, would you just explain the reason behind it, what you're doing for the, the public now? NFPA requires, uh, their f NFPA standard is all PPE, helmets, boots, gloves, bunker coat, bunker pants. If you wear it or don't wear it, it has to be replaced every 10 years. Mm -hmm. just so you can buy rationale, something. The rationale for doing it that way. Well, we, that way it doesn't we don't buy the entire exactly. fire department in one shot. Mm -hmm. That way, as the expiration date comes, it's not a big hit. Right. Yep. On the town. So you space them so it's a set. Exactly. I got you. Okay. We buy probably four or five sets a year, and it just keeps on going. So with that said and done, I move to approve 
Requisition number 1092 SD, the amount of $7,310 to Firematic Supply Company Incorporated for the purchase of PPE firefighter gear. Funds come from the fire department, line number 4220309. Let's check the voting. Second. Motion made by Joe S, seconded by Joe A. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's <coughs> unanimous. Thank you, board. Uh, the second one is a purchase order. This Vendors don't accept requisitions, I guess. so the fire department would like to go back their purchase orders. That way, you approve it, and off it goes. It's done. Thank you. Uh, it'll be purchase order 2024 911001 for the sum of one thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. The reason this is coming in front of the board, this is part of the AFG grant. So I have to show it in the minutes of the board's meetings. I have to make a copy of the board's minutes with the board voting on it. So that's the reason why we're in front of the board. So with that said and done, I move to approve the PL number 20349-11001 in the amount of $1,999.99 to balance fee for key vision blade video Lorandoscope. Lorandoscope too. Funds to come from the ambulance service of Arlene Fund ending in number 060. Funds to be reimbursed by 2023 miles. Second. Motion made by Joe S. Seconded by Joe A. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Board. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good night. Uh, what did Pat say, Robin? Pat is right here. Oh, she's still here. What's the okay, so Okay. Friday? Oh, when he should come back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. So not tonight. Okay. Then I'm going to table it, so if you want to take off, you're good. Yeah. And we'll wait for him when... I know. Well, yeah. I mean, he can come next week, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Oh. So let him know or let me know. Okay. It's not a Thanks, problem. Pat. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Do we need what she has? Hmm? No, we're good. What we have. Oh, okay. What is to do it again? Time, date, location, same bad time, same bad station. <laughs> oh. uh, the first responder breakfast that yeah. the board's invited to in the PA, Friday morning, 9 a.m., the fire station. <laughs> okay. She can't go. Yeah, it's okay. I, I, I get the I have plans. I have only plans. kidding, only kidding. <laughs> I, I just, honestly, I just need a head count so we can send the crew out uh, to purchase all the food and stuff like that. There's okay. three on for Friday, and all three are excellent cooks. So just please send me an email. Everybody's invited. At the fire station? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Thank Chief. You. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. You as well. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, next up, Mr. O'Mara, you got something on the fund balance policy? I do, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, fund balance has been a buzzword for about 22 months. And um, I'm sure you recall last year, it was used um, strategically and appropriately to keep the tax rate level, and, but in fact it went down because many of the sources of the funds came from the unassigned fund balance, not from taxpayer dollars. Um, I, I took a shot at a, a policy. Um, as, as you know, uh, the, well, this policy contains a number of um, funds that exist according to DRA and the NHMA, so you have definitions of funds and words, but I'm gonna go to the real meat and potatoes that everybody's very curious about, which is um, in this particular policy that I'm asking you to approve tonight, um, you are by voting in this policy following the Department of Revenue Administration's recommendation to keep an unassigned fund balance equal to, that their recommendation is eight to 15%, which includes town, county, and school. This policy suggests you do no more than 10%, and in any instance where it exceeds 10% of that number, 
the offset by policy, the difference will go to offset taxes by policy moving forward. So it's, it's again, it's not eight and it's not 15, it, it's 10. So if it got to 11, whatever dollar value that 11 represents, it will be up, put against taxes at a, at a meeting subsequent that the board votes on. I think a motion to adopt the fund balance policy as written would, would be in order. And uh, Robin has the policy for you to sign. That will take effect upon your signature. I move to, uh, to, re I move to uh, recommend that you adopt the uh, fund, policy, uh, fund, pol fund balance policy as proposed by the council. Easy for you to say, huh, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Motion made by Joe S, seconded by Joe A. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Well, at, at the last meeting we, we had mentioned, um, you guys were acknowledging a, uh, a, a intent to cut, which is all you can do is acknowledge. Um, I met with the assessor following the meeting, and she had told me that last year there were six intent to cuts filed last year, mm -hmm. and she received tax information from all six. We've only had two this year, and only one of the two has tax information yet. The second one, they're still cutting, so we won't know what that yield is until it's they're done. Sure. I also learned that loggers have a requirement I don't know if it's by regulation or statute, to honestly convey to a community what the yield was. In other words, they're being paid by the person who owns the property, but they have an obligation by rule to make sure that the town gets their money for the board feet that are harvested from the property based on the intent to cut. So, I mean, you have a good track record. I didn't, I, I was not aware that everybody was paid from last year, and I'm glad that um, that's the case. It just shows that everybody's doing the right thing by the town. Um, next up, we have the uh, SFC engineering invoice for the town hall and library. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, this invoice is for $2,000. It's for the study that took place of the town hall and uh, the library, uh, SFC Engineering, uh, specializes in uh, fire prevention, uh, and uh, they did both buildings, I issued a report. Um, it's available at the town hall, should anybody desire to read it. The reason that you're seeing this, I know it's under $5,000, uh, however, it has to come from the town building's uh, capital reserve that requires board approval and a letter that you'll be asked to sign that will go to the trustees of the trust fund to make the withdrawal to pay this invoice. So with that said, I move to pay invoice number 07516-SFC Engineering Partnership Incorporated in the amount of $2,000 for a site visit and study of town hall and the library. Funds to be withdrawn from town building capital reserve fund ending in 1764. Second. Motion made by Joe S, seconded by Joe A. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, that's unanimous. Kesha, before we do all these manifests, I'd like for you to, you get anything to say tonight? I'm good. Oh, good. <laughs> right. All right. So, uh, all right. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> I jumped ahead. I don't know I why. Know you did. I, I, I don't know why. I, 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 I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah. Maybe I just want out. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Joe. All right. I move to approve the payroll manifest in the amount of $80,758.94 for a pay period of October 6th through October 19th, 2024 
for the pay date of October 17th, 2024. Second. Motion made by Joe A, seconded by Joe S. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, that's unanimous. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $28,343.93 for the pay date of October 16th, 2024. Payment includes $7,815.41 to Zacon, Cluckay and Company for townwide auditing services. $5,560 to D&J Landscaping, LLC for groundskeeping service. Second. Motion made by Joe, seconded by Joe. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve the withdrawal of, of $14,035.20 from the cable revolving account with the pay date of October 16, 2024. Payment is to Arm One Network for Microsoft's annual licensing for government community compliance for the police station. Second. Hold on. Did, nope. Didn't we already do this? We approved, we approved like it. that cable could pay for it, and now this is like the actual manifest. So no, this would th there was discussion, not a vote, and now this is requesting the vote based on discussion. I really thought it was on the last one. Yeah, yes. Well, it couldn't have been because of the date. So the last time we met was no, 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 in a meeting. But the last time we met was for the fifteenth, right? I, I, I well, I there's. There's a chance. Oh, it's this one. Okay. To IT services. So the discussion was related to it not being anticipated in the PD, not knowing where they were going to get the money, but they were able to move some monies around to uh, take care of this unknown obligation, here to fall unknown. Okay. And it is budgeted for next year. I met with the chief and Perfect. went over his budget. Chiefs. Oh. Chiefs. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve the withdrawal of. $527 from the Uniform, Uniform Fire Watch account with the pay date of October 16, 2024. Payment is to East Coast Emergency Outfitter for multiple uniforms for the fire department. Second. Motion made by Joe A, seconded by Joe S. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve a withdrawal in the amount of $718.60 from the cable revolving account with the pay date of October 21, 2024. Payment is to Hewlett Packard Financial Services for computer lease invoices. Second. Motion made by Joe A, seconded by Joe S. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve the withdrawal of $4,999 to Oasis Property Maintenance from the Recreation Revolving Fund with the pay date of October 21st, 2024. Payment is for the repair of softball fields. Second. Motion made by Joe S. Seconded by Joe A. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to approve vendor manifest in the amount of $14,170.50 with a pay date of October 21st, 2024. Payment includes $10,710 to Municipal Resources, Inc. for staffing services and $730 to the Rockingham Planning Commission for Circuit Rider Planning Services. Second. Motion made by Joe A, seconded by Joe S. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Wait another minutes? Yeah, two minutes. I move to approve and accept the public meeting minutes dated October 15th, 2024, as written. Second. Motion made by Joe A, seconded by Joe S. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move to approve and accept the public meeting the non-public. What was that? The public meeting minutes dated October 24th, 2024, as written. Second. Motion made by Joe A, seconded by Joe S. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. You want to talk about the timber tax update again? No, I'm done. <laughs> about the ball, the ball fails. Well, Sorry, I, I, ju I jumped ahead. Uh, actually, um, so Ms. Simone and, and Ayello can maybe shed some light on this. There's, there's been a suggestion that given the season, the extension of the fall season, or summer in some cases, um, creates an opportunity to do a second field um, this year. It's from um, the revolving fund, so they don't lapse. There's no timetable associated with when it, when it ends. Um, and you approved uh, a plan for three fields over three years, not to exceed $19,000. And correct me if I have any of those numbers wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My question to the, to the two Joes, is was this what was the possibility of doing a the little league field um discuss at a rec commission meeting no 
No, we haven't brought it up yet, but I, I, uh, my personal opinion is I think we have the opportunity to do it now and, and get it done. It'll be in, uh, it'll be ready for the, for the season next year, and that'll be one of those things we have to worry about doing. Okay. We get the maintenance in, and then we can talk to the landscaping people to make sure the maintenance is done properly on it, and we're good to go. So when are you meeting again? Uh, no, Monday. Monday. Um, could you up. could you have a discussion amongst your group and come back with a recommendation? Yeah, yeah, we um, can do that. And it, and it's, I don't think if, if 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 the commission decides, yeah, let's take advantage of the weather and and do the field. Um, there needs to be some consultation with Oasis because there are some very bad times to be on a playing field. You can really you can ruin it for the duration of of, of the field's life. Until you resod it or reseed it, and when you reseed it and reroam it, you got to stay off it for two years. So, um, I just want the rec department to be aware that if they want to communicate with Oasis and then ask about the potential downside to doing something this so late in the season, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like letting them hit ground as in April. You just don't do it. That's why they go to school gyms right. because they can't get on the field because usually the field maintenance director or the <laughs> athletic director won't let playing take place on the field Be between cleats and basically it could be just trampling mm -hmm. the grass that hasn't taken root yet. Um, we'll, so have a, we'll have a discussion about it. We'll, uh, we'll have uh, someone be in contact with Oasis to make sure that everything should be the way it should be done. So we can put this on the next agenda for yeah. further discussion? Sure. Okay, thank you. <coughs> What's our treats for troops? Uh, well, actually, we're, we're, you're jumping ahead. Oh, I jumped ahead on purpose. <laughs> oh, rubbing it in? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Should I skip it? No, no, no. All right. Uh, Halloween hours, it's a friendly reminder. The trick or treat is being held on <coughs> All Hallows Eve on the 31st, which is Thursday from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, Town Hall will be giving out treats. Yes. This is true. Okay. I expect I, you dressed up. Are you dressing? I, I expect you dressed up. Are you dressing? In your costume? Uh, I wear one every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, again, a point of information, it's darker earlier. Make sure the kids have reflectors or reflecting colors, bright colors, flashlights help out. Um, and watch yourself on 108. And it actually looks like it's going to be extremely warm that day. Mm. I believe it's 70. Yeah, it's, yeah. Be it's on the menu. It might yeah. be close to 80. Yeah. It's crazy. And um, it's the last item that uh, Robin has made me aware of, uh, but I have a few I want to share with the board right after this. And that is that uh, once again this year we're doing Halloween candy for soldiers in partnership with Terex. They're paying for the boxing and the shipping. Um, and so at Town Hall, we have a good-sized bin. We are collecting candy for the soldiers. Um, and when we think we have a reasonable amount to send it down to Terex, uh, they'll ship it overseas for us. So I think it's designed to get candy out of the homes <laughs> of parents yeah. that haven't been opened, and it can be used for another purpose other than taking it to the transfer station in two weeks when it gets stale. Right. So it's, it's a good idea. It really is. Let's see. And let's remind everybody that sun, uh, Saturday night into Sunday is fall back. Reset your clocks an hour back so that you're not getting up an hour early. Thank you. Now, my, my quick hits, if I, if I may. I got a call today from Netcom. Hey. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And um, I told him uh, that he should be sitting at his computer within five minutes, and I will send him the proposed contract that has gone to him four times with no, co no correspondence being received back. I, I even emailed him and said, could you just acknowledge that you got it? Mm. He uh, said he was under the impression it was going to be forwarded to his attorney by me. No, I don't make it a practice of engaging an hourly fee mm. for someone else's attorney. That's just bad form. Uh, but more importantly, I didn't know who his attorney was. He was mistakenly um, thinking that I was at a site walk 
down behind the transfer station where the pass was located, and I was not. So all, I, all the information that was shared that day, I was not privy to, and although Trish gave me nuggets like who was there and what was discussed and the viability, which it was, um, he was under the impression that I was holding it up. He also offered that I thought you were going in another direction with another company, and uh, how he would know that is beyond me, unless that company called him and said, hey, what's up? Um, but be that as it may, um, he's gonna ship the proposed contract off to their attorney, we'll make some recommendations, and hopefully get back to the board before the end of the year. Uh, I did remind him that you folks went way out of your way to make this perhaps the most important warrant article um, on the warrant last year, and, and probably for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And um, that to me translates to quasi-emergency status on our end to follow through with something like that. Um, we don't, we don't cry, we don't cry fire when there's no fire. Mm -hmm. it, we have a communications fire burning right now, and we need to get it fixed. And I used some adult words with him, frankly, and um, he took them well. And he knows what he needs to do in the time frame he needs to do it in. So I'll be back before you, before New Year's Day. Awesome. Hmm. Um, Thursday, you guys were attended the swearing-in of uh, new chief de um, coming into budget season and other managerial level um, information uh, probably can best come from Chief Kane of MRI. And since we really haven't had a conversation about this, I'm wondering if you are, have considered or would consider a recommendation from me that Chief Kane stay on to assist the new chief, particularly on the budgeting side. When I met with them, um, it had to be last Friday after we met. Uh, the new chief, he gets it, but it's still so foreign and he's so distant from it. He's not as immersed as people who do it every day uh, are. Um, and I guess my recommendation would, would be till the end of the deliberative session, because right up until that that Saturday morning when we adjourn, it's all budget related. I mean, he walks it, he eats it, he sleeps it. Um, it's a good learning process. Um, and that's my recommendation, but I'd like to let MRI know that the curtain's not closing with Newton regarding the police department, and it's entirely up to you for the duration. So my opinion is, is that this board was very impressed by Chief Kane's uh, budgetary skills last year. Mm -hmm. That I don't want anybody else helping him do that. So you, I would definitely <coughs> recommend he stays on until deliberative. I, I would like to review it after deliberative. Oh, fair enough. If if. The con if the consensus is that that's an appropriate time frame to revisit this, I don't necessarily need a motion, but I want to make sure you're all on the same sure. page and you're all yeah. in agreement. That's my yeah. position. I agree. I agree with you. There you go. There's your consensus, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a, a rec coordinator report. I've interviewed two candidates, and um, we have a non-public session to discuss uh, my notes in more detail about both candidates. So um, if there's an agreement that's reached but not voted on, it'll appear on the next agenda for public consumption based on the, our discussion after the meeting in non-public session. Sure. Um, the gentleman that I interviewed for a potential hire at the highway department um, has taken another position, um, more money, fewer hours, um, and more in his line of work. He had all the licenses necessary to do the job from Massachusetts. He worked at Newburyport. Um, but his expertise was welding. And um, while he had all those other licenses and could operate heavy equipment, I think the offer that he got in addition to ours was more along the lines of using his welding skills. So he has withdrawn and we're beating the bushes once again. Once again. 
I think he was looking more for part-time too, where we had moved it to a full-time position, right? That's correct. And, yeah. and, and while he was sitting in front of me, I said, if that doesn't work out for you, we have a maintenance facil a facility maintenance technician's <laughs> position open that's part-time, if you're interested in that. And um, he said he, he would think about it, but he walked out with two job descriptions in his hand. Next item to make you aware of this, yesterday I received an envelope from the road agent. As you know, he's been assisting the town with the removal of metal from the transfer station because it was becoming unwieldy and possibly dangerous in terms of how high it was growing. Um, he's no longer doing that. It's, the problem's been rectified f for now. And he's got, he's, he sent the math, which is what he took out, what it cost him, and including paying him for the, the can the, and, and hauling it back and forth. Um, and he also used the grappler to put the stuff in the can. And at the end of the day, um, he sent us, he handed me a check yesterday for $940.70 to be deposited in the transfer fund. Um, this was a big help, and while I really think we would have done it for break even, 950 bucks is pretty good, and I appreciate his, very much his honesty in, in showing us the math. And not only that, but 900 and something as opposed to what did we get? 200 dollars from the bucks. other gentleman yeah, when he better. removed that whole pile by himself. <laughs> that's a little bit better. I think there's quite a discrepancy there. <coughs> ah, thank you. I also conducted an interview uh, for a possible replacement in the health officer position. Um, al although it's vacant, um, the, uh, the person who was holding the position has indicated that he'd be willing to help us out should the need arise while we're in transition, and the need did, ar did arise. Uh, we had uh, a bed bottom inspection that was needed, also uh, an interior inspection of a local preschool in order to keep up their licensure. And in both instances, there's a cause and effect. If you don't get the work done for them and approved, they're waiting for us. Uh, so I, uh, I, I took it upon myself and uh, engaged the services of uh, Mike Dorman. And uh, he has either done it or is preparing, preparing to do it. Um, at your next meeting, I hope to have a candidate for that position. Once again, the health officer is very sporadic, hit or miss, uh, ideal for a retiree with skills, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a retiree. And hopefully, I, well, I will have a name for you at the next meeting, and um, he should be able to hit the ground running. He has extensive experience in uh, septics. Uh, let's see. DOT this morning. Today was day one of a two-day session uh, involving uh, local responsible people, Trish and I were volunteered, I guess, I don't know, I've been voluntold. Yeah, <laughs> everybody stepped backward and Trish and I didn't, so we're obviously we stepped forward according to that <laughs> scenario. Uh, so this morning, um, Trish logged on. Uh, I couldn't log on, and I was going back and forth between my personal email, work email, and then I was finally on the telephone with our call the coordinator, who was very nice. And she ended up sending me the slideshow. So I was able to get the audio on my phone, slideshow on my laptop, but it was not in the manner that they preferred, which is all laptop. Somehow a, t a, a cell phone, a cell phone user participating in the lecture messes up something on their end. So it was kind of a prohibition. Yeah. Um, so I said, I have my phone, I could hear it, I could see it, thank you for the slides. Does my time count? I don't know, sitting there for nothing. And so for two hours, she wrote back, absolutely. Two hours later, <gasps> Jim. <laughs> no, I talked, two people talked to me and said, it's, uh, it's a no-go. You have to be on, and I said to Trish, I haven't said it to the person, because it's not her fault. I'm, I'm not really gonna speak to her. I had the slides, just like everyone else. I heard the speakers, just like anyone else. 
the difference between me and those who used their laptop was I couldn't ask questions. Right. That was it. So, um, well, I jumped off. I, don't, I, I didn't want to waste all that time and have my appellate process fall on my face, too. So I just jumped off. I'll follow up tomorrow and find out whether or not I could do day, day two. It, it would be good if it's not a building block type of program where the, everything tomorrow is based on what they learned today. <laughs> I just don't know the answer to that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start from zero or drive to Concord and sit with five different people and hear what they have to say. Uh, but it was informative. Uh, lastly, I received a, an email from DES looking for the post-closure report that you've heard me talk about before. Um, the email did acknowledge that despite having no post-closure reports on file with DES, you should fill it out to avoid certain sanctions down the road. Did they say should? Did it's they down. use that word? Yeah, should. So um, while I'm not a transfer station expert by any stretch, um, I'm willing to fill it out as best I can and ship it off. Um, it may not be complete. I won't send inaccurate information, but I'll do what I can. And I believe there was a, he was, he was inferring to me that upon receipt, the brakes would be put on at DES for partial compliance with the process that's required by their rule and reg. So that's where we are on that, and hopefully we can make this go away. Um, I have a, a, a proposal from uh, R.W. Gillespie. They do a lot of monitoring. Um, I spoke to them about trying to track down this post-closure thing, and they were kind of a logical source to go to, and they had nothing in front of them. Uh, they did find something in the, in the form of a, uh, a letter from Nancy, a letter or an email, excuse me, from R.W. Grace to R.W. Grace, isn't that awesome? Gillespie. Uh, to Nancy, the former town administrator, saying we reviewed your post-closure report, the draft, and it's still not, no one can, no one can find it. So um, I'm not gonna delay anymore. And, and by the way, after, after I hung up, that's when the proposal came in the mail to do additional work for an additional price. When you authorize them to do the water, mon water monitoring, Around the transfer station, we had a range, and it was only a $3,000 delta. I think it was 31000 to 34000 um, And they, was, they were leaning towards the lower end of that number. This still stayed within the range, but they went up to the higher number in the range that they shared with us the first time. So um, looks like I'm going to do it. If we can put the brakes on, maybe we can get, out, get our arms around it. Um, I'm just I'm, I'm shocked that... It's all falling today. In 2024, no other prior years that they have anything from us on file up there. Which begs the question, are we, are we required to do it? So I'll fill out the form as best I can and we'll move forward from there. And that's all I have. Are you sure? Yes. Bob, how's the transfer station going? <laughs> I'm going to make the recommendation that we go into non-public and... <clears throat> Bob, Bob, Bob. Uh -huh. I'm doing committee reports right now. Oh, I'm committee reports. Yet. I'm asking you how the transfer station is going. <clears throat> uh, we're moving forward. I talked with Pete. It's been over a year about getting the retention containment for the uh, used motor oil. He's ordered that, a spill kit. Um, that tank is supposed to be emptied, uh, hopefully by the end of this week, so that they can take that, move that, get that all set up. Um, they're all supposed, supposed to be, um, because as we, the select board, talked about the cardboard compact uh, is becoming a liability because not only myself but all of us at one point or another have seen people from the town putting their cardboard in in that um, compact or reaching in it's been stuck a couple times and we feel as though it's a liability so i told them that they need to start receiving it themselves 
and not allow the town residents to go back there anymore and be operating or dealing with that compactor. Uh, so that's work in progress. Um, Pete's also supposed to be getting the necessary blocks and whatnot to be able to lift the front of the building so that we can make sure that the, the subfloor has space so it'll breathe so that the flooring doesn't dry um, rot out on that building. Um, he said he's supposed to be getting that from Home Depot so that he can address that problem. And I told him we wanted the flow patent done. He put a call into the company. They're holding off for right now, waiting to see if there's another town in this area that might be interested in it so that they could come down um, and make proper use of their time to do a couple of towns Excellent. instead of just one. And um, hopefully we can get that done and then we can work on that in the spring and we'll deal with that. So, um, you know, I made the statement that that is a, a place of business and we need to start operating our transfer station as such, more business-like, okay. so that the people are going through there in a timely, safe manner. Alrighty. Consumer-oriented. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Joe. Uh, yeah, I just would like everybody to uh, just put, put it out there that uh, we will be having a uh, Veterans Day celebration on November 11th. Uh, it's going to be preceded by a, uh, a free breakfast for the veterans at the at the old uh, the old uh, fire station in the Junction, uh, sponsored by Jeff Church, and we'll have a ceremony at 11 11 following that. And invitations will be sent out to the veterans this week. Okay. Joe, <coughs> uh, recreation we. Uh, working on the budget i think we're pretty close to being done we also are working on the ball field use agree user agreement uh, pretty sure that will be close to being done by the rec and then maybe we'll pass that on to the yeah, board or the town yeah, council I think something the, the board has to adopt it as a policy you might want to run it by council, council too council just too. to make sure okay. yeah uh, but that's it for the rec so are you contemplating um forgive the expression a retainer Yes, you are. Yeah, security deposit plus a um, losing the key refi cost, re key re uh, pin in the lock yeah. cost. Yeah, so I know. Thank you. Thank you. The lose the key right. replacement key cost. Right. Okay. All right. You ready now? Yeah. <laughs> I move to go in a non-public session on the RSA ninety-one. Dash A colon three, all three, A, B, and C. Second. Roll call. Recording stopped. Roll call vote. Joe A. Aye. Joe 